Hello everyone, welcome back to another unboxing a lot sooner than I thought I was going to do another one because I had a surprise delivery today and as you can see in front of us here we have a rather huge assortment of Dark Souls the board game associated things that's the miniature game by Steamforge Games I uh, did very very well on Kickstarter which I did back and as a result of it doing so well on Kickstarter it made many many stretch goals and these plus plus this but it's just some more cards which you board you use to play the game on are all Kickstarter goals, uh, stretch goals on Kickstarter rather. Didn't pay for any of these as, other than just because of how much money it made on the Kickstarter which was just paying for the base game and a couple of the expansions. All this gets included, it took them a long time to ship them so we're going to take a quick look at each of these expansions, the stretch gold expansions and I'm very very interested to see the quality of miniature in them because although the ones that launched in the base game were pretty good, and again, you're not going to bother taking a look at those because they're just for playing the game, the uh, Dark Root Basin, is that what it was called? It's been a while. The expansion, the miniatures were noticeably worse. So I'm curious what kind of quality we're going to see here. So we're going to work our way down the list, starting with the character expansion. So here we have the character expansion. Also, forgot to mention it came with uh, a metal activation priority token, which again is just actually used for the game terms. So the character expansion, it launched with a few of the base classes you can start as in the Dark Souls games. This adds the ones you can see in the front, like Pyromancer and the Depraved and Cleric, and gives you miniatures for them, and I believe miniatures wearing specific armor sets that you get as you play the game and do a campaign. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Character expansion. Characters introduction. So there's the characters it comes with over here, the Thief, Mercenary, Cleric, Pyromancer, Sorcerer, Depraved, and then the very specific armor sets like Black Iron, the Katarina armor, Black Knight, Guardian, etc. Oh, and the uh, gold trimmed one, my favourite from Dark Souls 1. Character notes, etc. The play cards, that you need to actually use the characters as you do a campaign. They look a bit paler than I remember the base ones being, but that it has been a while since I've looked at them honestly, so maybe I'm misremembering. There's the base cards, nothing on the back of them. Now here is the important part, the quality of the miniatures. These are just the equipment cards that go with the armor sets. So let me just take the lid off here, it's going to have sellotape isn't it? Please don't. It does have sellotape. One second. Alright, let's see what kind of quality we've got here. looking good. I'm not seeing any bent parts. I don't think there's any warped bases. That's good. Here's a just an, one example. An old dragon tooth there. Let's just put that in. It's actually the larger miniatures that I think there's more risk. The sculpts on the, uh, the smaller stuff consistently pretty good. So yeah, okay, those look pretty neat. Actually, on the really dangerously th like thin stuff, like for instance the shawls, is that what they were called? I think so. They seem to hold up pretty well, so it's good. So yeah, as far as player models go, good. The knight is I know, he's le leaning back real weird. I think it's meant to be that he's bracing himself, but it just kind of looks like he's leaning backwards pointlessly for no reason. Okay, well... As far as miniatures, oh, there's the important one. Oh, he's got a bent sword. My knight of Katarina, Onion Knight himself. He's got a bent sword. It happens to the best of us, Sigvard. It happens. That's very unfortunate. Obviously fixable, just very unfortunate. Dip it in hot water till it's malleable. Just gently caress and straighten it out. Right, let's move on to the next expansion, which is the Phantoms expansion. So this expansion does a couple of things. It gives you summonable AI companions and the rules to use those. And it also gives you the rules for summoning invaders. If you want to have those aspects of the game included in your campaigns. And it has the relevant icons and such for those. You can already see a very bent sword on one of the invaders. But let's, we'll look at that in a second book about how you use them, how you interact with them within a level, uh, within a campaign. The icons required. Oh, including HP. HP tokens for summons and invaders. 
and that's the invasion stones there as well. These are the AI decks for summons and invaders, and these are the gear that you get for killing invaders. So they went with very strange mold colours for this. Compared to like the old miniatures that came with the base game, this is very very bright red for the invaders instead of the dark red they should be, and very white for the summons instead of like the pale grey. I guess they wanted them to look different from the standard player models and stuff. Well the player models are brown though. Well either way, I'm going to cut off some cello tape. So let's look at the obvious problem here immediately and that is a uh, Abyss Watcher with an exceptionally damaged sword. Very, very flimsy. At risk of falling off. Obviously, again, you could just use the hot water method to try and mould it back into shape, but it was sitting in a place where that shouldn't have happened because of the padding on the packaging there, which implies this passed certification and was like, yeah, that's fine. We'll just pop that in there and it's good. This shouldn't have patched. It should not have. Definitely not. It's not even a slight bend, it's an exceptionally obvious one. Got a little bit of a bent spear, it's not straight. And this invader whose name I've forgotten. From Dark Souls 1 when you're heading down to Tomb of the Giants if I remember correctly. We have Old Custard Head, which I'm happy to say is a good sculpt. That looks fun. You have to paint him the colour of custard to be truly usable. But that's a decent looking miniature, that one. Uh, Mildred's cleaver just kind of looks like flash that you'd cut away. You see what I mean? It's like chipped but it looks flimsy. Mm. Is this Captain Kirk? What's his name with the Thorn armor? That's okay, that's not too bad looking. That's a good one. And then some other miscellaneous invaders who I don't really remember. Him I remember as being annoying old ox face but I don't remember why. Is he from Dark Souls 2? So there's the other, there's the good summon. Mr. Grossly Incandescent himself. Solaire doing his Praise the Sun pose. That's a good sculpt. Of course, there's no bits on it to be bent. There's a look at teal. Onion Knight, does this Onion Knight have a. No, this Onion Knight does not come with a bent sword. It's also a better looking sword. So compare that to the one we just looked at for players. This technically should be the exact same sculpt, no? But the sword, it's not even just that the sword isn't bent, it looks different. Very strange. Oh, Egon of whatever he is. Don't like him. Double shield man. Remember him. With his aggro ring. That's good sculpt too. I'd say that's a mixture. That's a mixture of good and bad. That looks slightly bent there. Who is this? Oh, it's the uh, the samurai. I've forgotten his name. His katana is bent in a way that a katana should not be. But overall, I don't get the very vibrant red they chose for the invaders. It should be a darker red for sure. But, there's only a couple of bad bends which can be fixed. The sculpts themselves actually do look good. But the next thing we're going to look at, which is the Explorer's Expansion, has bigger miniatures. And that will be the real telling thing about the quality. So the Explorer's Expansion adds mimics, treasure chests, some other miscellaneous gibbles you can use for your campaigns. At least one boss, the Pursuer. Oh, and some other minion mobs by the looks of it. So again, booklet on how to incorporate them into a campaign. Health for the Pursuer. Oh, old Dragon Slayer as well, and a Mimic boss. We fought, we played this digitally in Tabletop Simulator on my gaming channel, and we actually did fight that. All right, again, more sellotape required, so one second. So besides the AI deck for the bosses here, and then also encounter and loot cards for them, we have the models themselves. Barrels are just, well, if you have just the base game and don't have the stretch goals, barrels are just like flippable cardboard things, so here's actual props you can paint up. Same with treasure chests, some of which you can use this campaign to roll and see if they're a mimic. You've got a bonfire to paint for your home base, just to add a flair to it. Gravestones teach you about the boss you're going to fight, which is a neat little aspect of actually playing the game. And then that'll be the mimic that's actually, yeah, it's got a tongue. <laughs> that's a mimic that's a boss. Alright, let's take a look at the sculpt of this Mr. Mimic. It's good. I actually think that's pretty good. He's not got any long, sharp, bendy bits, so it helps. But yeah, all in all, that is a good mimic. If a mimic can so be called. Now, Mr. Pursuer. A fan favourite from Dark Souls 2. The sword is not bent. The sculpt looks good. The base is fine. It's got an extra bit of weight there. Presumably to help keep him balanced because he's bending on one foot. 
Nice texture on the back of his coat as well. Shield looks good. That's a decent looking sculpt. I'd say that, that is a good model. I'm glad. And the spears on the Silver Knights, or whatever they are, Silver Knight, Black Knight, whatever, they're all good as well. Not much to this expansion. That's the standout one of this one, for sure. The biggest stretch goal that got made though is the Iron Keep expansion. Let's move on and take a look at that. So keep in mind the additional tiles I showed you at the start go with this expansion. They're Iron Keep themed and Dark Root Basin as well. But this has two new bosses, one of which everybody hates from Dark Souls 2 and one of which from the Dark Souls 2 DLC I think everybody likes. Much smaller notes but it actually has a campaign if you want to play through a game that's like Dark Souls 2 specifically. Boss health, AI decks, room encounters and gear and then the models. That is a big model, let's take a look. Alright so we have ourselves two very adorable little crystal lizards that you can paint up again to be thematically apt. Got some standard alone soldiers, some of their quivers are a little bent in a way that they shouldn't be. They should be bent very smoothly like this one is. This one I would say is overly straight and this one is bent upwards rather than round but that's okay. These alone knights, and these are the captain ones, I don't remember their official name, alone captain, it could be. Those look good. The archers look fine. Then you've got yourself the, the ninja turtles, which again look pretty good. A lot of these miniatures would probably be good stand-in for Warhammer Fancy stuff. But the two that matter though, oh, alone your your Naginata or whatever it's classed as is a little twisted. That's okay. The actual sculpt in his armour is good. Yeah, no imperfections as far as I can see, no flash. It's cleaned up real nice. But you can see just it's it's not a straight line, that is wavy. Just a little bit unsmooth. His hair tassel looks fine. Alright, but then the main event. The huge my class is a mega boss within the, uh, the game's terms, I'm not sure. We have Smelter Demon, an absolutely huge miniature. I imagine this would be very fun to paint with contrast paint. Very detailed sword. You know that would be like a perfect like Demon of Corn or something. With his, his stomach that's also a mouth. You could add like a flame effect coming out. You might have to rebase him, but... If you didn't want to play the Dark Souls board game long term, it's still a good source of miniatures that have alternative uses. That's a good sculpt. That's a very good sculpt. So much better than the Sif one. So much better than the Gaping Dragon one, which I was incredibly disappointed by. If you want to see unboxings on those, incidentally, they're on my main gaming channel because this channel didn't exist when I did those. So yeah, that, that is a good sculpt. I'm very happy with that miniature. Alone? Eh. Yeah. But keep in mind, if you just backed the Kickstarter for the game, you get all this for free, based on as long as you bought the base box, which I did. So beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. I don't know if this is going to be any of this is going to be available to non-Kickstarter backers eventually. You'll have to keep an eye on Steamforge games if you want to. Happier with the quality of this than the actual expansion I bought. Is that a good thing? Mm, I'm not sure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at the stretch goals for the Dark Souls miniature game that finally dispatched after like a year and a lot of not great stuff from Steamforge. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the future. Start for now.